Well, it's 6 p.m. I think I'm going to get started here. Ha! I'm completely unprepared for this. <laughs> but that's the way it should be. And let's um, let's see what happens here. Uh, welcome to episode N. And um, we're going to work today with this machinery. This lovely machinery that is sitting in my upstairs room. Um, for those who, are, who have not seen this before, this is a Teletype Model 33. It's a um, computer terminal and it dates to about 1970, probably the late 60s. Uh, it's about 50 years old and maybe a little bit more. Uh, this terminal is the classic ASCII computer terminal. It's kind of the machine that defined ASCII in a, in a lot of ways. Um, and I'm here to uh, go play with it. <laughs> I have it lying around. Let's, um, let's make it do something useful. The thing that you can do is connect it to a computer. I have it connected to a computer. Once it's connected to a computer, then you can do all the usual things you would like to do. Now, you may have seen a terminal. I mean, if you're using like a Mac, uh, then you just have a, an app called Terminal. And um, it looks like this. And you can go into your Terminal app and you can do things like see uh, who's logged in and um, do all sorts of stuff on the Terminal. Um, this is the physical version of that little app and obviously it predates the app a little bit but the kinds of things that you want to do in the terminal um, this is the definitive device for them so let's um, let's go play I'm gonna turn it online and the machine warms up a little bit it's got a motor in back that's spinning some of the machinery none of the machinery is really moving right now except just the motor um, because we haven't sent or received any data. Um, but it sends data anytime I keep type things here. And it's actually connected already to a machine that's running Unix, so it doesn't know the, the hello command, because <laughs> there is no such thing. Um, and then signals coming in to this terminal from the computer arrive over a wire that's got a current loop on it and they arrive at the printer. The printer uses typewriter ribbons and it has a little mechanical head here and the head jumps up and down and rotates and then this little hammer hits the head very hard at the right time to bash it against the paper. And that's how we get print on paper. That's how the terminal output works. And then to the left we have a tape punch for paper tape for hard copy. Produces things like this. Uh, with data punched in holes in tape. Each of the bits is a bit. Each of the vertical stripes is a, is a byte. And then there's a tape reader down here where we can load tape in and use that to send uh, whatever's on the tape to whatever is listening. So there we are, that's the teletype. Teletype model 33 automatic send receive all right join the chat hey Luna what are we doing today this is a really good question <laughs> so I have, I have a, a super full agenda <laughs> as, as I, I think this is gonna happen right that I start something and we started building a chat bot and uh, you get it to do something and then you open the opportunity to do a whole lot more so let's do a whole lot more. Um, I want to have this Twitch bot that, that we wrote um, that we wrote last time. Um, the Twitch bot subscribes to the Twitch chat and just basically prints out everything that happens in chat. Hopefully, it's going to work. We'll see. If it breaks, then we'll fix it. Um, and. Um, it says it's ready. I've changed some of the messages and just tidied it up a little bit from where we were last time. So it's connected. It's uh, it's in the chat. And so if I say uh, hello in chat, 
then it printed in here and so anything you print will uh, come out on the on the terminal um, just the way a bot should it has commands so if I say uh, pling uh, bell then it should ring the bell come on it's not ringing the bell Oh no! <laughs> the bell code is broken. We gotta fix it. <laughs> it's supposed to ring the bell. There's also a test command. I wonder if that works. Yeah, the test command just echoes and says hello, whoever. So the test command works, but the bell's broken. So we're gonna fix the bell. So this is great. This is what we managed to do last time. I wanna fix one of the glaring problems with the Twitch bot. And I'm going to interrupt the Twitch bot and put it into background and demonstrate the problem. And Luna, I'm going to need your help or anybody else who's on the chat. Um, the problem is multitasking. So I've logged into this system. I'm going to say Twitch bot ampersand. So this is running Debian Linux. It's uh, actually on a Raspberry Pi, a tiny undersized machine that I'm connected to. But I'm going to say Twitch button and put it in the background with the ampersand. And uh, so it's kicked off this background job and uh, I can say, uh, show me what the, the jobs are. And it's running. Oh, I'm running auto message. And my Twitch bot is ready. And auto message is actually the solution that I want to get to, of um, of what this thing is uh, is doing. But um, clearly, auto message is not working yet. We'll fix that. <laughs> we'll figure out how to fix that. So um, the problem is, if I'm in the middle of doing something here, and then. I'm, I'm working interactively at the console and there's something on chat then it's going to interrupt just by writing it all over the paper um, and even I think if I'm in the middle of um, uh, let's go in to do something really s useful like um, I'm going to edit the twitch bot code uh, then right now I'm in the middle of something that takes extreme concentration and somebody in the chat says hey Luna are you still there give us a give us a message and um, let me see I'm gonna put something here around oh retroist yo <laughs> Awesome, thank you. <laughs> so this is great. This is perfect. The Twitch bot is receiving the messages and printing them out on the terminal so I can catch up with the chat. It's behaving like a real bot. It's responding to commands and so on, but it's interrupting me because I'm trying to do some editing right now. And I don't want that. <laughs> There's a more general story to why I don't want that. It's like... Um, how do I even do that? How do I have something that, that is going to behave nicely? I can't switch screens. Hey, fair enough. Thank you. Oh, there's an interesting thing on your name here. Um, if you look at the printout, fair angle uh, back arrow enough, back arrow, back arrow, because the underscore doesn't exist in the uh, ASCII 63 character set that this thing is built with. Um, I'm going to have to quit from my editor. I've lost my context of what exactly I was doing and where I was. I was in the middle of some work. And, uh, and, <laughs> and the bot interrupts by printing on the paper. So I want to have it multitask. Um, if I was a Unix expert, um, then I might use like Tmux or Screen or something 
to have multiple screens that I can switch between. And you can do that the kind of logical screens thing with a print terminal if you want to. <laughs> um, but I want to have a little kind of uh, a bit more uh, interactive multitasking. So I got together a plan for how I'm going to do that. And the, the, um, the thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to kill the Twitch bot on here. Um, and I'm going to print out a thing that I wrote called auto message, which is trying to fix this. And auto message has taken me into the depths of the Unix command terminal things in a way that I uh, didn't know possible. And it doesn't work clearly because it's supposed to be, it's not, it says it's running here. Um, and um, job one was started without job control, but uh, hmm. I'll, I'll have to kill it. Um, so let's have a look at auto message, see what it does. I'll talk about what it does, and there's a digression while it does it. So uh, you can look at this on GitHub. Um, I checked this in the other day after hacking on it for a little bit. I have not yet run it on this machine, so clearly it doesn't do the right thing. Uh, it's a little Python script that is trying to be kind of nice about how it interrupts with a background task to print things onto the terminal. Um, and so the plan that I had was, let's only write to the terminal when I'm in the shell, not when I'm in the editor, not when I'm in some other thing, right? If I'm in some graphics package, a wish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get interrupted by chat from the Twitch bot. I want it to just wait. And when I've exited back to the shell, then we can print all that stuff. And then the second condition is when I've been in the shell and kind of idle for some level of time, like 30, mi 30 seconds or something like that, then, um, then let's interrupt me. So fair enough. How did, how did I do what? Um, which, which bit? Exactly. Um, there's there's several pieces of magic here, and I want to like tease them apart so that we figure out. I'm not quite sure what the question, what what which piece of it, it your question is about. <laughs> By the way, I treat this thing like a vintage motorbike or a something like that. I mean, it's the same kind of. Um, you can only ride it when the sun's out. <laughs> you, you don't want to uh, treat it too hard. you got to stop and refuel and oil it every um, few days. Um, one of these days I'll take the lid off for you and do a session where we look at the innards and oil it. How did I code that? Oh, that's a great question. I actually uh, used PyCharm, which is my favorite uh, coding editor. Oh, no, I didn't. I used Vim. Um, and Python, and it doesn't all together work, but we'll read the code because I want to make it work, and that's really the job for today. Is I got to read this code, um, figure out what it's not doing right, and so on. But before I get to that, I think there's a. <sighs> Can you test something with this? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Tell me more about what you would want to test. Um, I'm I'm totally open for people using this terminal. To, to try things. Um, so I publish all the code that, that I write for this thing so that you can go hack on it. Um, so let me see. So so to understand the way I went with this kind of auto message thing, I'm going to wind all the way back and go to prehistory of Unix and ramble until I run out of things to ramble about. Can you test some art? Of course you can test some art. This thing is for art. That's that's part of the deal here. Hold on one second.
I put together a plan the other day uh, no, when I first got this machine running that um, I, want it to, I want it to print emoji. This is the ASCII machine. It defined like the ASCII character set. Um, it, it's, it's the machine that I think helped to make ASCII successful um, along with DEC and all the other many computer stuff and then the micros and so on. But ASCII itself has been kind of morphed into uh, Unicode and UTF-8. And Unicode is expanding faster than any character set has a right to. And it's getting emojis. And so I want to have emoji on the teletype. Of course, you can't fit many of them on a single line if you're going to print it like this. But uh, I have uh, some code that prints emojis. And if you have, <laughs> if you have art that you want to print, Oh, absolutely. So is this one line of art? I'm going to turn TwitchBot back on. So that anything you put into the chat is just going to come print out. And that'll give you a, a sense for, uh, for what it is. But if it's more than just a single line, um, if it's more than just a single line of stuff, then um, uh, send it to me on email or a Twitter or something like that, and I can put my email into here. Uh, and yeah, I, I can probably do email offline. I don't think I can do email online. Uno. Print might be stopping auto message from running when it's backgrounded, because in some um, cases, background processes will pause on I.O. Yeah. Well, that is true. And there's a whole set of stuff there that I really don't understand about how Unix I.O. works. And really, that's, that's what I'm trying to explore here is how can I understand, like, this stuff? So fair enough says. Didn't work. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's also a mistype here. You can say didn't BT. I got a mistype on, on this. Occasionally, we're going to get, like, characters that that go through the system badly. I think actually this is not because of a physical, like a hardware thing. I think that B in the printout is because uh, the curly apostrophe mapped onto something. And then also you can see on Luna's uh, note here, we slammed into the uh, right margin. And I have a thing that... Um, that turns on automatic wrapping for this. Um, sorry, I uh, I missed your smiley there. But you can try your smiley. Now, your smiley is not hooked up to the emoji fire to, to print like a big emoji. But that's a good task. So, um, yeah. Let me, let me tell you the story that I, I planned to kind of go into, because I think this story helps to understand uh, the role of computers in our modern life. <laughs> I'm going to get really philosophical about this shit. So, oh yeah, well we have the text of it, even if we don't have the picture of it, well that's a, that's a start. So. When I work with this thing, it's ridiculously tactile, right? I click a thing here, and the key goes down, and the thing echoes and jumps and prints, and I've got this very tactile and crazy noisy, like, interacting with the world kind of experience, right? So that's one of the things about, um, about the teletype. It's, it's, it's very physical. You cannot ignore it. Or so you would think. But once you start connect to a computer through it, or once you start to connect to kind of other people that you're talking through it, then the machine gets out of the way in a really strange way. And like everybody's used to carrying around these cell phones where um, you, you kind of forget that there's this hunk of computing machinery in your hand that you're interacting with and, and you're just focused on what you're doing through it and not what you're doing with it. And that it seems to be just a function of the 
the way that our heads are wired. Um, and I think it's really, really interesting because that goes way back to the beginnings of um, computer technology. And terminals like this in the 60s were connected to multi-user computers. And this is the kind of terminal that Unix was written on connected to a PDP-7. And the PDP-7 was, was a digital mini that was multi-user. You could have multiple peripherals and that included multiple terminals connecting to these things. And so since the dawn of time in computer world, like 50 years ago, they've been multi-user systems and there's been ways for, for the, the users of them to talk to each other. And when you do that, the computer machinery gets out of the way and you end up like in conversation. It's really weird. You know, when you dive into something and you're like, you're focused on what's happening through it and not on the physicalness of what you're interacting with. It's just one of those really strange things. And it dates back to even before computers. I mean, if you look at these things on the Telex network, the, the, um, the way that teletypes kind of evolved is they came through the telegraph. They were the first digital uh, communications machinery connected to telegraph networks. And essentially, you'd have one of these at one end of the line, or something similar to it, uh, and one at the other end of the line, and current flowing between them. And when you press a letter here, it sends a pattern of current on and off that the other end receives, and it actuates the print thing directly in exactly the same way as just echoing from the computer, only faster. Right, that echo has got a tenth of a second delay on it, but if, if it's going straight across the, the country on a, on a fixed line, you don't even get that delay. You actually get, like... I don't know if you can hear the difference there. I've turned it on to local, where literally the keyboard current is echoed immediately. And, um, and that echo... It, you can use that to connect multiple of these machines together, and you, there you've got a communications network. And so the first social networks on digital machinery completely predate computers. You, you didn't need a computer to sit in the middle. And then, then you get these like people who are using social digital media to communicate. So back in the day of Unix, when the first large-scale kind of computers, not even before Unix, when mainframes and, and so on ruled the world, some of the first applications for this were social media for chat. And it turns out you can still see it. That stuff still exists because Unix has been so successful and Linux is not everywhere now. And it still has those things in it. Um, and so I want to play with those things because they're really relevant to the auto message and what does that mean and do. Um, so here on this, let's use W to see kind of who's online. And here I'm logged in um, with a, a terminal uh, with a different user. Um, and so I can see that uh, there's two of us logged in. ASR33, which is this thing, and then Pi, which is my other login. Right? Um, and and of course, I can actually connect. Um, I can connect to the same account, and that's actually going to be interesting if I remember the password. Um, because now I've got kind of three uh, users connected. Two of them as ASR33, and then one of them as as Pi, which we'll forget about. Um, Actually, that's a little confusing. Let's unlog and log out again and uh, log in as ASR33, right? This is going to make it really straightforward. If I look at who's logged in on this side, then I get the same result as if I look at who's logged in on this side. I have an ASR33 on the teletype called PTYACM0. And I have myself logged in on a on a pseudo terminal called PTS zero. So So 
so I've got multiple users on the same host and on this one I've got like a modern uh, pretend terminal right this is a, sim a software simulation of a, of a teletype machine that happens to have some additional capabilities like lowercase letters um, but um, they're basically the same thing and even without like anything I can say um, echo hi you to device tty acm0 and it prints out hi you right and so I can even say uh, cat from my tty to dev tty acm0 and anything I type here comes out on your terminal right two users separated by space connected through uh, a computer and then on here I can do the same from my from my terminal PTS zero um, and here we are, we have a social network with just cat. <laughs> Two users logged into a Unix machine and cat. <laughs> doesn't take anything else to create a social network and it's like that has been true since the earliest days of Unix and um, it's extraordinary um, so when I first used one of these it was in the probably 80s I think I think in 1980 maybe 81 I don't know I, I'm refusing to remember exactly um, but I was connected to a prime computer that was 30 miles away or 20 miles away and there were a bunch of other people logged in at the same time, and we could send messages to each other. Um, not using cat, but... Um, so it, it would be really dangerous if, like, any user can go... Uh, just write stuff on your terminal. Because you're in the middle of editing some critical... Let's say it's a science project, and some uh, rando says... Um, starts printing stuff on your terminal. <laughs> don't do that. So that's been a problem since the earliest days as well. <laughs> and so uh, there's there's actually a function here called there's a, there's a bunch because these are kind of prehistoric. There's there's a whole lot of um, Unix utilities that are all about sending messages from one user to another. And one of them is talk. Um, and if I say talk ASR33 uh, and then dev TTY ACM0 to say I actually want to talk to myself on this machine, on this terminal, then talk sets up a connection from one to the other and um, sends an invitation and uses a split screen. I don't think I can use talk on the hard copy. Um, I hope I can. It might even be worth. Yeah, I got that one. And actually, it gave me the the right error message, which is, it it had an error when it was opening the terminal definition file tty thirty three amx that says, this is a hard copy terminal. It's not going to even let me do the split screen thing. Um, so talk is still there. Talk is stupid. It's uh, UDP broadcast from one user to another, but it actually crosses machines, which is kind of nice. Um, the the other utility that you'll see on modern systems is is wall, um, and wall sends a broadcast if we're allowed to. Um,
And you may have seen broadcast messages if you've hung out on multi-user machines. Typically, this is intended for just the admin to go say, uh, uh, emergency message, we're going to turn on the printer at 3 o'clock. Um, but of course, when you had terminals in a data center, this is exactly the kind of thing that wall was used for regularly. Um, and then there's like lower uh, lower kind of tech things than wall. Uh, let me log in again as a different user. I'm going to log in as Pi, and now I have two users on this thing. And I think I should say, I should be able to say write, yeah. I can write to ASR33. And that's kind of the, the nice version of this, um, uh, just cat from one thing to another. And then I can say, right to the Pi user, because that's who messaged me. And it turns out that I actually have permission turned off. So the thing that we didn't see when I was logged in both machines as the same user, and I just used cat. Hey, text fan. Glad you could join us. Um, please feel free to interrupt me, because I'm getting kind of I've been, I've been on my spiel about social networking for a little while now. Um, <laughs> so, so the thing about um, about cat that we used earlier is I can just cat a message from one terminal to the other if I'm logged in as the same user. It doesn't work if I'm not logged in as the same user. Um, now the thing about about write is. Um, Actually, right did let me. I've, I've got something. My auto message is message, messing with the permissions a little. Um, my, uh, the, the, if you want to send a message from one user to another, then how do you do it? And so there's a uh, there's a utility in Unix called MESG or message that um, gives you permission bits that you can say, is it okay to go send a message or to receive a message? Um, am I okay for people to send me messages just using write? And if I say message N, then it'll turn it off. And if I say message N, it'll turn it off. And now if I'm here and I say write ASR 33, um, I have write permission turned off and uh, ASR33 has messages disabled as well. So we can't send messages to each other because we've done some control over it. So the message MESG um, um, you can look up the source for this thing and I, I did of course. Um, there's a couple packages here, one proc ps and one util linux, and uh, they're both kind of relevant. Um, if I look in util linux, um, I just cloned this off of github, so it's uh, a fairly recent copy of the, the utils. Um, there's all sorts of, the, the unix utilities live in here, and then proc ps has things like PS and other process kind of utilities, and I think write maybe in proc PS. I forget. Um, but one of the things that's in util Linux is wall that we just saw, and also message, and they're under term utils. So um, I want to actually go look at those. Um, Let's look at term utils. And, uh, there's a bunch of C code in here. Oh my goodness, there's an A Getty as well. Ah, oh, we need to go investigate A Getty at some other time. Uh, now, message.c, um, as I say, go browse this on the internet and read the code. I think. Um, 
I think it's too large to print on paper. Oop. It's 173 lines long. It's uh, 5,500. So that's 554 seconds to print it. That's quite a long time. I'm not going to print it. <laughs> I could go into the editor and look at it. But um, I, I looked at it the other day, and the way that it works is kind of obvious when you think. Like, this is connected to the simplest of multi-user machines that you can imagine. Uh, imagine a PDP-7 that is, like, prehistoric and slow, but you're using it to write Unix. Well, everything's a file. Well, the terminal is represented by a file too. We saw it, it's like dev tty, right? And dev tty is, has got file attributes, just like you'd expect. And if you turn messages off, it's not working because auto message is, uh, is busted and is, is interfering with this thing. <laughs> uh, let's, um, let's go kill it. <laughs> I have auto message running in the background and I really shouldn't have. There it is, it's running Python. Yeah. Boom. Thank you. All right. All right. Now, auto message is out of my way. Uh, let's look at my terminal. Oh, I think I know what it is. That's better. Yeah, there we are. So dev TTY is kind of a magic thing that that has some special magicness. So dev TTY I think is owned by root, but everybody you can talk you can talk about dev TTY and it no it thinks like it maps it to your current terminal. My actual terminal is dev TTY ACM0 and so if I do a long listing of that, then I can see it has some flags. If I turn messages off, then the right flag for groups, the group right flag, got flipped from on to off. So my terminal that's actually my real terminal, ASR33 owns it because that's my login terminal, is not group writable and that means that nobody else can write messages on it. So if I try to message me from some other user, it's going to say, sorry, ASR33 has messages disabled. And sure enough, if I uh, bring that window back in and say message uh, sorry, say write ASR33, then ASR33 has messages disabled. Turn it back on. My, my right bit goes back on. And I can go write them. They can't write me. So there we are. So that's how we write a social network in Unix and how we control our access to it so that you don't get messages when you don't want. And that's really important to me because if I'm like printing um, some fancy thing that takes 20 minutes to print, I don't want to get interrupted with a chat in the middle of it. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Let's touch the physical thing again. 
so yeah there's this real weird philosophical thing about the way that if you're in a chat with somebody that the chat comes into the foreground and the machinery like everything between the chair and the other end of the line the machinery becomes invisible and you might think that some crazy mechanical terminal that's noisier than a sewing machine and um, that you wouldn't be able to ignore it but you totally can and if you're in a communications environment then even with just 10 characters a second in uppercase you get this like communication thing um, so uh, um, I have I have recently received a magical thing as a gift which is a login to a CDC 6500 supercomputer that dates from around the same time as this. It's a 1967 supercomputer and it's hosted in Seattle at the Living Computer Museum um, and it's extraordinary. Um, one of the features of this 1967 supercomputer designed for space research or whatever it was um, for number crunching Fortran at incredible speed one of the features of application packages is chat between users because it's like everybody wants to and once you do you forget that you're using a 10 million dollar supercomputer and uh, least lines over a teletype network to do it you just get on with chatting with people and playing games and all of the rest of it it's ridiculous it's like what are we <laughs> we're, we're games machines <sighs> so now let's get some real work done <laughs> I know this is not really a work thing but I did print out some software that I wanted to have do the right thing with this and I'm gonna look at it and see if you can help me get it working um, so this is the Python code for this thing called auto message. So first of all, set the TTY to be group writable when the following conditions are true. First of all, when you're running the shell, and then second, that you've been idle for like 30 seconds or so. And um, so the foreground, this is kind of weird too, it's a little known unitism, I guess. Um, like how do you tell what I'm running? Well. Let's, let's look at this. And it says I'm logged in from TTY ACM0. And I logged in uh, a little while ago. No, I've been logged in for 18 minutes. I've been idle for zero seconds. And I'm running W right now when this is running. And then the Pi user who's logged in here um, is at the shell, is running bash. But the bash command line doesn't say bash, it says dash bash. And that's a strange Unixism. If I'm if I go in here and like uh, load up another shell, actually let's do several shells, and then do kind of who's running what. Then I'm running who and uh, Color type is running bash. But the dash on there means um, that, that that is the login program. In other words, it's the very first thing when I logged into the machine, it's the first process. It's my shell. It's, it's the process that I'm running. Whereas if I go here, it should say just KSH. Yeah, it says KSH because I'm running the corn shell. But I'm not running like the corn shell as my login shell. I'm just running corn shell as an app. It's like, yes, this is what I'm doing right now. So I can tell whether I'm at my login shell by looking for, is there a dash in front of the process name? So that's one of my conditions. I can say, okay, only send somebody, on, only only let people send me a message if I'm sitting at the login shell waiting with nothing else to do, and if I've been idle for like 30 seconds or more. So that's my uh, 
plan for this machine for this auto message when I first was thinking about that kind of uh, the twitch bot it's like the twitch bot's written in Python because I know a little bit of Python so I can play with that um, but um, I didn't want to write this functionality like a hundred times right once in each uh, as a library right I didn't want to write it in each app that I want to deal with. I want to just have a separate app. I can kind of have a daemon that sits in the background and um, turns my permission on and off um, if I'm idle. And so let's see. This, this, I thought this was working and then it didn't seem to behave. So let's maybe we just test it. But let's read this and see if anything bad works. In my main I say let's look at the command line argument um, if I specify an integer, then it's that's how long I should wait for idle. If I don't specify anything, then let's wait for 10 minutes, 10 seconds. Um, I'm working on a file descriptor which is standard out of whatever this process is run with. And then I do some checks. I look at the m time, which is the last time the, the file descriptor was modified. So if I go back to my ls-l of the uh, of the terminal, this is, I forget which timestamp this is, but the, uh, if you do stat on this file, on this dev slash ttyacm0, if you stat that file, then you've got an access time, and a create time, and a modified time, and roughly the, um, the access time is the last time that, that there was any input at the terminal, and the modified, no, the other way around. Modified time is last time there was input, and access time is last time there was input or output. So we look at the difference, and then we check if the login shell is the foreground process, and there's a, a library utility to get the foreground process ID, and we then open the command line for it. Uh, and um, there's a print bug here, actually. Proc slash, this is a curly brace. You just can't see it because the machine doesn't have curly braces. Um, and then we decide to make it writable by the group or not. So I think I'm going to take out these comments so that we can then debug this auto message. Um, But let me know if you want to take this in a different direction. Um, oh, no. pound doesn't get me there. Okay, let's uh, change um, start of line pound to just nothing. Let's see if that works. Yep, that works. Uh, let's go to the next line. Uh, on the and equals sw group or whatever, isn't there a binary not missing? Oh, there is. Uh, no. To turn a flag, you and with the inverse of the flag. There is a binary not missing. Um, so. Uh, but I'll show you. <laughs> I've got another commented line to uncomment, so let me uh, change the uh, pound to nothing. And 
that piece of the listing said uh, IW group because it's uppercase so let's just show you on the listing where it says um, yeah uh, there's actually two missing characters here that just don't appear in the print um, there is a or equals on this line here and there is no pipe sign there is no or in the character set it just didn't exist yet uh, so it doesn't print and that's unfortunate because it means we get the wrong idea of the code <laughs> and similarly with the tilde there's a tilde in front of this one and equals tilde stat so it'll turn it off um, and there is no tilde message there's no tilde on this keyboard and it, there's no tilde in the print or in the character set that it understands um, but I, I wrote it on a more modern terminal <laughs> I wrote it in Vim <laughs> on a Okay, SSH session. So if I open my SSH session, then I, I would be able to see that. But, uh, so let me run auto message. Actually, no. Let me let me run auto message in the background because I want to look at is my foreground process the shell and then from here I'm gonna also say um, let's see if I can dev tty acm0 and it's not writable right now so message is n right it's not writable So let's run auto message in the background. And uh, let's look at this thing here. And it's. Um, I've been idle for 10 seconds. And so it prints, hey idler. And now it is messageable. So I can message me. And if I say, then I'm messageable. But then if I say it again, I'm not messageable because I'm not, I'm not idle anymore because I just typed something. So I think auto, me auto message is doing the right thing. It is turning my message on and off, turning my messageability on and off. And so to do that, looking at the uh, process, I made the login shell. It's looking at how long have I been idle by actually looking at the uh, the idle time of this device, well, the modification time of this device, and then it's setting the write flag, the group write flag for this device. So, auto message is working. It's set up in my in my profile so that I'm going to automatically run it. Oh, actually, no, too late. <laughs> too late. I'm auto. Oh, I'm running auto message with this little uh, with this little message. The hey idler. So every time I'm idle for 10 seconds, it's going gonna, it's gonna to say, hey, idler. Okay, I'll deal with that. <laughs> it is running because it's running Python. Let's wait a few seconds. This is going to interrupt me again and say, hey, idler, with any luck. Oh, no, I'm already, I'm already writable. So it's, it's approximately working. Um, Let's do something so that I'm not idle anymore. Auto message is going to kick in after a second or so. And I can't message me. And then it's going to kick back in and 
hopefully, in 10 seconds or so, tell me that I can idle again. Oh no, it's not. 